You're listening to the one of us.net podcast network. despite my open disdain for the television series, oh. that sometimes it'd be like a Sunday and you're kind of hung over on the couch. And let's face it, there was a point in time that there would be literally nothing on TV but Baywatch. And the internet did not exist. Even with cable, there would be every, nothing on TV but Baywatch. And you'd be like, fine, I guess I'll watch Baywatch. I've probably seen 30 or 40 episodes of Baywatch. I think, I mean, it's impossible to not have. I don't have cable, and they still show episodes of Baywatch at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. And yes, I watch them, because there's nothing else on. No, well, that's the point where I, I, was I a, give up. Well, I was a teenage boy during the 90s, so yes, I watched a lot of Baywatch. <laughs> no, I was too old to have been doing it. I was old enough I should have been like, you know what, I, why does the TV even on? I'm going to go Shit, w- read Prost. I watched Baywatch <laughs> nights. Oh, please. <laughs> You're right. I've never read press. Yeah. <laughs> I've never stopped watching trashy television because I was like, ooh. ooh I, I am very pretentious and must read this prose. You know, I never did finish rereading The Tempest. <laughs> well, it's like people who brag about not having a TV. It's like, okay, good for you. Yeah, good for you. That's what awesome. are you talking about? I actually show more disdain for you that you've decided to cut out an entire thing yeah. of culture and arts from your life because you have some very pretentious idea that it's harmful. They're reading, you know, Ma- Dr. Shivago. M- maybe just have some self-control and not just watch whatever's on. Well, like I had a math teacher that... Baywatch. But which is the opposition of what watching Baywatch is, which is literally just watching it because there's nothing else on. Well, that, that but you see, like, Baywatch used to come on at like 5.30 on a Sunday or a Saturday. Mm-hmm. It was part of that great period where you had, I think it was WB... And UPN had those shitty shows that would come on on Saturday afternoons like Cleopatra 2525 oh, and yeah. Andromeda <laughs> and like, uh, uh, was it? Well, Hercules and yeah, Xena. Xena. Highlander, the television Highlander show, the TV show, which is my favorite, by the way. <laughs> no, but I miss those shows because now with Netflix and you know, Amazon Night. Prime. You don't Sorry. get those anymore. Everything's mm-hmm. so highly, it's so well produced I, I would that ar- it's not cheesy anymore. I, I would argue that that is exactly why I don't miss those shows. But we have Legends of Tomorrow, I'm so like, yes. <laughs> I, I, yeah, Legends of Tomorrow is kind of the modern day evolution. As Randy would shows. say, it's the best show from 1996 of all time. Yeah, right? Um, crossed with uh, like a weird, hard to nail down period of Doctor Who. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking about Baywatch the movie. The movie, Not though. the television Wh- show. Which, well, it's hard to tell, kind of. Because <laughs> I was watching this going, you know, whereas clearly there's an attempt to borrow from what 21 and 22 Jump, Jump Street were doing as comedy adaptations of 80s TV yeah. shows. This m- never seems to be willing to go full retard, as it were. You know, it's like... It has its um, moments. It ha- does have its moments where you're like, okay, that was kind of funny. or That was chuckle worthy. C- quite a few fall flat on their face. But mostly... It's a two-hour episode of Baywatch. Well, it, it felt like it, it, it felt like to, an R-rated. To, sorry. Well, to draw a sports analogy, it felt like a batter who's like, "Look, I can get a solid double. I know I can get a solid double, or I can swing for the fences and hit a home run, or I'm going to strike out horribly." Yep. So this lost is, me. I'm going to get a solid <laughs> double. I'm going to get on second and see what's oh. going on. And like it, it did what it wanted to do, but I definitely felt like I felt the writers fighting through the entire movie. There were writers that you could tell wanted to make it a lot funnier. Like there was this running gag throughout the entire movie of this um this little standee for the main character who was in an aquarium. Mm-hmm. That was really funny. That and you could tell that probably gag. came from like one writer who was like really trying. Honestly, this worked at its best when it did start to go kind of absurd like that. Yeah. But then there was also a little too many attempts to fall back on the my least favorite humor in these type of movies, the gross out joke. Oh, oh, I, got so funny. I got something gross in my mouth. And come on, man. It's not just not funny to me anymore. But Zach Efron does that really well. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that actually more than anything saves this movie, in my opinion, is that Dwayne Johnson and Zach Efron, who, who hog up by far the majority of the screen time here, 
are both really charismatic, really talented, Very comedic alpha. guys. They're and they have good chemistry yeah. together. Working antagonistically as they are here in this film. The idea being Dwayne Johnson plays Mitch Buchan- Buchanan, but don't worry, David Hasselhoff shows up as the original Mitch. Hey, he'll be ready. <laughs> uh, so they get, this is a sequel to the TV series. Mitch, um, yes, Mitch. <laughs> but <laughs> he's You're wearing workman shoes. <laughs> he's revealed immediately as being like almost a superhero. Every Everybody on the beach just loves him because he's pretty much saved all their lives. Well, he's a parody of The Rock, which is great. Like, yeah. The Rock is parodying himself. I mean, the movie starts with a something that's so over the top, like, literally the words Baywatch rising up at the sea out behind, behind uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson with dolphins <laughs> jumping around. You're like, okay, this is the kind of movie we're in for here. So he's this mega, unrealistically greatest guy in the world. And his life is complicated when it's time to get some new lifeguards in. And Zach Efron shows up as Matt Brody, a, a former Olympic a swimmer who disgraced himself by basically partying too hard the night before. He's supposed to be the Michael Phelps. Ryan Locke. Yeah, he's supposed to be Ryan Locke, basically. Okay, I don't know who that is. He was his dude <laughs> in know Brazil. No, I okay. boring. Well, in the 2016 Olympics, he basically, with his friends, just said, Part oh, we got robbed. So Didn't get robbed. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I did hear about that. Anyway, so he shows up with an all attitude. He's, like, he's exactly who... Like, I think we all pictured Zach Efron really was before it turned out, wow, he actually is pretty funny. Like him and Channing like Tatum. Guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, him and Channing Tatum. We're like, oh, I bet you anything they're just like the world's biggest frat boy, egotistical douchebag. And that's exactly who he is when he shows up. And he's like, well, you have to hire me because your boss is the one who sent me a letter telling me to come here. Uh, Dwayne Johnson's like, well, we're not having any of that. But as it turns out, he's kind of forced to have it and bring him as part of the team. Of course, there's got to be some ridiculous like storyline, like lifeguards who have to fight drug smugglers, which is exactly what's going on. The villain here being the unbelievably unearthly gorgeous Priyanka Chopra playing Seriously. Victoria Leeds, who is the owner, is buying up all the real estate along the beach and she's selling some sort of mega crack. What is it? Uh, oh God, you know better the than... Flocka. The Flocka. The Flocka. Waka Flocka. Waka. No, but, what, what was it from Batman R.I.P.? Oh, weapons grade crystal meth. There you go. It's weapons grade crystal, <laughs> crystal meth. <laughs> oh, an old Leog reference. And and of course, the, the, the police are kind of like keep reminding you as the joke we all had when we used to watch the show, you're not police officers. You're, you're lifeguards. So Why when you're, are you investigating this? You know, when you're chasing a bunch of guys, it's not you chasing them like cops. It's one group of guys chasing, chasing another, another group, group of guys. guys. You are not in pursuit. <laughs> you're not in pursuit with Rob Hubel playing the, the captain. But I, I will say I think this is, like I said, helped more than anything by an enthusiastic cast of people that all are kind of giving it their all. Alexandra Daddario, which obviously I've never been able to say enough good she things about. She was in um, another movie with The Rock last summer. She was in that Earthquake movie. San Andreas? San yeah, Andreas. she was his okay. daughter in that she, in that one. Uh, she plays Summer Quinn, who's another new re- recruit here, but she definitely kind of plays the lifeguard who's who's like somewhat self-aware of what's happening. Whereas on the other side of it, we have Kelly Rohrbach as C.J. Parker, the role originally pay, played by Pamela Anderson, uh, who is, you know, running in slow motion. And she's not dumb, but she's definitely kind of a little less like, what's actually going on here? Yeah, she she's less aware as far as like, she immediately follows The Rock's lead as far as like, never questions the fact that, hey, maybe we shouldn't be investigating these drug lords. <laughs> right. Uh, John Bass plays Ronnie, who's a little fat Jewish kid who basically wants to become a lifeguard because he's totally in love with CJ Parker. He's basically a standard for all the teenage boys that are going to come see this movie. He's, yep. he's oh, feels weird in a film that everybody is doing comedy and that he's cast as like a character who would be comedy relief in an action movie, but there's no need for him here because everybody's doing oh, comedy. No, there's totally a need for him. He's the, he's the Shia LaBeouf. Of this movie, like he's the analog, so that nerds. And I'm saying this from experience. Nerds who are watching this movie and they're like, "Oh my god, it's this girl that's really hot. Oh, he looks like me. Maybe I have a shot." Like that's that's why he's there. I mean, he's literally tells talks about how he's the tech guy. Like yeah. every group has to have a tech guy. Yeah, no, I mean, I get that. I'm just saying, like, the way they use him often, often, like, oh, look at the guy who's not beautiful, is the running joke, I mean, basically. to be fair to him, apparently he's hung like a horse, so good for him. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, and then the the last of the team is uh, uh, someone I was in for, unfamiliar with, Ilfanesh Hadera, who plays Stephanie Holden, who she, is all... Is, 
insinuated all too lately to be Mitch's love interest. Yeah. Like it feels like there's deleted sequences yeah. there. And she was actually she she played one of the uh, one of the makeup artists in season two of Master of None. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, she she's 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 been showing more and more stuff. Yeah. She's beautiful, and she was good. That's the thing. Everybody really gives it their all in this, and that's one of the reasons I kind of gave it more credit than maybe the writing even deserves. Because I found on the whole, the writing was just all too familiar stuff. But well, these guys are just, especially like I said, Dwayne Johnson, Zach Efron, who are are giving it a hundred and ten percent, no matter what. I mean, these are guys who took, you know, working out mentality to doing comedy no, and if, it works if, for them if anything like this movie and we'll get to the plot in a second but this movie um it, well, it, we already it, talked about the plot we did yeah i discussed the whole thing oh sorry <laughs> i just zoom in and out yeah, that's all right <laughs> no it's like you just came back from your honeymoon yeah. you don't know what the fuck's going yeah, on but i tell you this movie it you have such good actors in it and they're really trying it's something i enjoyed but the entire time i could feel it it could be better yeah, and it's not even it's not even that I'm holding to a high standard. Like I'm holding to what they were trying for. They were obviously trying just to do something that can make some money, do do decent Blu-ray sales in terms of the producing. Mm-hmm. But this could have been this could have been on the level if they really wanted to of the Lego Movie and Twenty One Jump Street. Like they were they you could tell that they could have hit there if they would have had some confidence in what they were doing. But that's a really hard line to walk. Well, a lot and of I the, think they got scared. A lot of the nostalgia moments that those films do so well, where it's a funny sort yeah. of meta awareness moment, was done so much better by those movies than it was here. In fact, some of the weaker moments are those moments with this film. I mean, boy, I mean, the Pamela Anderson appearance when she finally appears is kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I thought it was good. I really? I was she... like, wow, you look like uh, a, looks... a Halloween mask version. Yeah. Of yeah. Halloween. I, I mean, was... if they, I mean, they intentionally only showed. A, just briefly showed her yeah. because she has she has seen better days. Yeah. Well, she's mostly sure. done that to herself. They couldn't even give her any dialogue. Yeah, and the, and no like, lines, wow. no even not even full face face shots. Whereas Hasselhoff, for a guy in his sixties, still looks pretty good. Yeah, he He's even good. willing to be shirtless, sitting next yeah. to the Rock shirtless. And like <laughs> you talk about, you talk about stingers in a movie. This one had one of one of the funniest, like not the funniest, but one of the oddest stingers, where it's like. Okay, we're just watching. This is not even an outtake. This is just a. Uh, we're gonna film some extra shit at yeah. the end of the movie now because that's because we don't have credits anymore. And I want to say this as a former usher that used to clean up theaters. Stingers suck because I can't get into the theater to fucking clean the theater <laughs> when you, yeah. all these assholes are sitting there. Oh, are we gonna have five stingers and guys and guys? Get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but you are sympathetic because you sit, probably sat there during all five stingers as well. Didn't well, yeah, because fuck the ushers. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, this movie really. To get back to it, the writing could be better, the the direction could be better, and I wish they had gone for it. But for what it is, it's sort of a it, it's the quintessential summer comedy. It could be a shit ton worse. Like if anything, yeah. I'm really encouraged to see movies like Baywatch. Like five years ago, Bay, this movie this movie would have been shit. But I feel like movies like Twenty One Jump Street, Twenty Two Jump Street, they raised the bar. They've raised that bar. The people you can't do that anymore. That's why Adam Sandler only has movies coming out on Netflix. You can't just put out shit anymore. Well, that and he sucks because <laughs> it's just not an excuse anymore. You might make money, but people are gonna be like, "Wait a second, I went and saw that, and that was great." Right. Well, nobody's buying into the Billy Madison humor anymore. Yeah. We definitely evolved, hopefully, Thank as God. a species, and we've gotten past that. So, yeah, when you do see a movie like that, you're just like, "Okay, this is straight to DVD," mm. or so. And but yeah, Twenty One Jump Street definitely, I think, changed the face of stupid comedy and making fun of comedy that makes fun of itself. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? The and, self-aware comedy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and like I said, there are moments that this does this very well. It's just it does good enough of a job that I can't dismiss it completely. But it is still kind of like, boy, you guys just should have tried harder. Like I'm kind of like, I mean, it's hard to judge against comedies as good as the three we're putting them up against. Yeah. But at the same time, like, wow, this is a lot better than it would. Like you said, it would have been five years ago, yeah. but it's still nowhere near as good as it should be. I feel like if they get decent returns and this does well, I feel like we we, we might be watching the Batman Begins to the Dark Knight. Dude, all I'm saying is. I'm very excited if this gets a sequel because I want them to do Baywatch Nights. Yes. Where we're like vampires and werewolves and shit versus yes. them. I'm like, did you ever watch Baywatch no, Nights? No, because At it first sucks. it was straightforward and then they were like, we're not, we're getting crappy ratings. So they brought in like vampires and yes, werewolves they and did. shit. And I was like, dude, this is so bad. It's wonderful. I love it. And then if they do that with a sequel movie, I am all over that shit. If I can talk about one little thing that it's starting to really start to bother me. 
And maybe because, like, I am married now and, like, I'm not a teenage boy anymore. Ah, oh boy, here we but, go. <laughs> but, like, the idea of that of, of the C.J. Parker without any without any real discussion as to why she would get with this guy. Like, we don't really know. Because, like, no, it looks like we don't, we don't know what's going on. Mm. Science fiction. Uh, You're I, like, I have. Come seen, on, man. I will say, outside of even somebody being rich, yeah. I've encountered no, multiple I'm not saying rich. I'm, times in my. I know, I know, but I'm saying outside of that, I've encountered multiple times in my life it going both ways. A really amazing looking woman with a what the fuck is she doing with that guy, and vice versa. Yeah. It's not uncommon. I just would like a Plus little bit more explanation. Plus, he had a giant schlong. Yeah, they yeah, did point true. out he had a huge dick, and she saw that shit close up. Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, he was a night. He was really cool. And, like, in terms of, like, he can make her laugh, I guess. Yeah. But that opening it, gag was fucking hilarious. I mean, I've never, even when I'm I was skinny, laughing. been a particularly great-looking guy. Yeah. And I promise you, I've dated well out of my league because I can make people laugh. That is a powerful weapon, my Well, it's something you try to explain to, like, because, like, uh, a bunch of college guys are like, oh, okay, just talk to her. Yeah. You have no idea what she's into. She <laughs> might like you. And, by the way, like, if you're not great at the gift of gab... Magic is not an acceptable subject. Oh, God, no. no. I don't care I what like you, you saw. Know that from no, I don't, but I saw some. Well, not personally. I saw. I had a friend who was trying to do that. Like, oh, look what I've got. Like, no. Don't do magic. That's not going to work. I mean, the only way that would work for you is if you could, like, make the whole bar disappear or something. Well, there, 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 there are three main tips for guys who are like, I can't get a girlfriend. One, don't do magic. Two, don't talk that close to her. No. Like, give her some Keep personal her space. And number three, if she says she doesn't want to date you, move on. Oh, yeah. Can and I add go. a fourth, yeah. um, which would be good hygiene? Yes. Yeah. Good hygiene. Yes. And you know what? They say make eye contact. Part of that is so you're not looking at her boobs. Yeah. You but know? not creepy eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. you got to break contact. that eye contact. Yeah. you got to have, have the eye contact with a smile on your eyes, not a smirk. Not a creepy smile. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. A smile. Like, a happy <laughs> smile, not a smirky smile. Like, smile in the mirror so, you're, so you don't look like a serial just, killer. Just make just sure. Just look at Dwayne Johnson. Look at what he's doing and do that. Like, I gotta say, man, you look at you look at Dwayne Johnson's Be career Dwayne. and uh, Zac Efron. It's just it. It's really cool to see like these people just work fucking hard. Yeah, and they're just like out there killing it. And even in a movie that should be mediocre, like this cast brings it up to what it is. And like this movie should honestly, with the writing, be about a six out of ten. But it's like a, it's a it's a solid seven, just because they seven brought, what out of oh, ten? It for my final thoughts. It is a. Seven rock pectoral muscles that are dreaming and appear in my dreams out of ten. Ooh, fair enough. <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> That's awfully specific. I know, right? Been... I will. We're um, right here. We just met, but we're right here. Yeah, <laughs> eyes up here. Right, some patico. Uh, for me, I thought I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think that this is a great cast, and I you can definitely tell they put the, their hearts in it. I don't know if it's just because Dwayne Johnson is so charismatic in real life that he probably rallied them mm-hmm. so much that they were all just like super excited to be a part of the movie. I think that it has um, a lot of different kinds of humor that it will appeal to a very diverse audience. There's the raunchy humor that Chris hates, but it also has like the silly humor mm-hmm. that is very appealing to a wide audience. It's got a you know sexy humor. It's got you know a more physical comedy that I know a lot of people <laughs> love, especially with the opening gag. Um, so I, I actually walked into this movie thinking I was going to hate it and I was delighted and I laughed my ass off surprisingly enough so I'm going to give it seven and a half um, rock shaped sandcastles out of ten. For the record it's not raunchy comedy I mind it's gross out comedy yeah. I, I don't like specifically I'm just so just it so does sick have that of, as well it's, just, it's always comedy. just the same joke oh I got it in my mouth <laughs> and it's just fun hearing the rock say fuck so many times. It is that great. Is that agree. is so I great. mean, there was so many fucks. Yeah, I, the, he spent too much of his career trying to say, I'm going to be everybody to everything to everybody. Being like PG-13 dad. <laughs> yeah, tooth being fairy. in Disney stuff. And I was like, dude, no. Forgot no. about the Tooth Fairy. It's the only rock movie I can't, I haven't seen the entire <laughs> way through. It, it's not good. Yeah. For, the, for a guy who has, from a guy who has seen it. No, Ellie. No, I stopped Just watching it about 30 minutes through. Uh, anyway, yeah. No, I mean, like, y'all obviously like this more than I did, but I still did enjoy it for what it's worth. I think that this is definitely a middle-of-the-road effort, but for this type of comedy, that's better than most of the ones that Hollywood puts out. So I definitely give it points just based on that alone. And the fact that the cast is all genuinely pretty damn good at comedy. There's some really great 
timing in this uh, with the way it's edited and put together, which I guess you've got to some extent credit the director here, mm-hmm. Seth Gordon, who has definitely done some great comedy stuff before and some really bad comedy. He did the great horrible bosses and he did the terrible identity thief. Oh. So, you know, six and one half dozen and uh, the other. Yeah. This, one word this, is pixels. Yeah, oh. well, he only produced that one. Oh, okay. yeah, actually, I didn't it, miss that uh, But he, it's a shame that anybody had their fingers yeah. in that movie in any way, shape, or form. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's because of all this six and one half dozen the other that I actually just give this a six. It's uh, six moments that I was admittedly craning my head around trying to see if I could see a little bit more side move from Alexander Daddario. Well, and and just <laughs> one little one little last thing. Yeah. we got. I want to give it just special credit for having a Baywatch movie that does not really rely at all on sex appeal. Well, I don't necessarily think I, that's I, true. I, but that's, I'm, what I'm saying is that's not the entire point. Yeah. It would have been very easy to be like, it's Baywatch, boobs, but... It's all it's about. But it actually tries to make a good movie that if you took it out, you can still watch. That's true. Mm, I agree. I halfway agree with you. I definitely think this, and not criticizing it for it, but I would say this trades a lot on Jesus Christ, look at these amazingly but it does almost men and women, though. God fig- like people. Yeah, men and women. But so did the show. Really? Yeah. Fucking David Hasselhoff went in the, those days was cut. Yeah. He was, he, man. He could call upon his car to show up at any time. His car talked, and they fought evil. That's yeah. not Baywatch. It's, oh, oh, <laughs> is Baywatch the one with the lifeguards? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that show was awful. It's like I'm, I'm, I don't mean to break it to you, but David Hasselhoff is an actor. He wasn't in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Mm, I'm not buying it. Okay. One of us.net has been your one stop shop for all things geek for years. But there's a side to them many of you have never heard the subscription side. Subscribe and listen to great podcasts like The Breakfast Pub, The Original Gentleman, and the Watch a Movie With Us series. Head on over to one of us.net and don't forget your towel.